I'm Judge Penny Wolfgang. There is much to celebrate in Buffalo's Hispanic community. Ground was broken for the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute at Niagara and Hudson Streets in the city. I was there with the hometown camera for the celebration. How will this new building bring people from the Hispanic community and all nationalities together? Find out on this edition of The Big Picture. Welcome to the program. We first told you about the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute a few years ago here on WBBZ with Casimiro Rodriguez. As president of the Hispanic Heritage Council, Cas has spearheaded this vision from development, securing funding, and now looking to see it built. He and other community leaders were on hand for the ceremonies. Today marks a major milestone in our community in so many ways. Nationally and locally, today, September 15th, we launch Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> 13 years ago, we officially launched Hispanic Heritage Month at the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. And that set the direction of this organization. It began through an experience being on the Erie County Cultural Resource Board. County Executive Mark Polencars, you're the current County Executive, thank you very much for giving me that opportunity and all the intelligence that I was able to gather as being part of that member of that board. And that's why we've developed the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute or the, the Hispanic Heritage Council. We needed, we needed something to be the driver so that not only our community but Western New York appreciates Hispanic heritage, history, and culture. And while we do that, we preserve the history, the rich history of our Hispanic community here in Western New York. We've been part of the landscape of Western New York for over a century. And we really are very grateful. The Reverend said it very well that today we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. And I believe that. I shadowed many of those. <laughs> There's so many to thank the local foundations, government that's been hand in hand with us from day one. I'd like to thank you, our mayor, our county executive, our senators, our assemblymen, our councilmen, everyone's been engaged. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, we can't do it alone. And from New York State, Nancy Hernandez, from our controller's office, thank you very much for being here. There are many foundations that have come together to help us, and I'm not gonna mention them all, but there's a list of all the donors right to the back wall there. Take a moment, and if you see those folks, thank them because their help and support has been astronomical. Mo, on February 25th, 2019, I walked in your office. I have to say this, because this is part of the history. Didn't know what, was I, what the answers were and what I was facing. But one of the things I did know is that I had a commitment to see a project and present it to you at Empire State Development. And I remember your exact words, Kaz, you got a long way to go. <laughs> but one of the things I asked Mo, I said, Mo, what do I need to do? You know, I come from the manufacturing, the corporate world. I know how to launch engines, transmissions all over the world. But as far as the deal with government, 
and try to present a project that's the crown jewel of our community, you know, I'm just getting started. He says, Kaz, you need to do this, 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 and that. I took that to heart. I rolled up my sleeve, and we're here today, Mo. Thank you very much. You know, I, I have to say that uh, this project is one that's been in our hearts for many years. In 2019, we announced it. We didn't have a penny. We didn't own no land. Our budget, you know, our account was probably less than 100000 But the pandemic hit in 2020, and it stalled everything. Let me say that that year, we took advantage of the opportunity. We said everybody's down, nobody's given any money, but what we're going to do with the funds that we started getting from our first foundation, which is Osai, Oshai Foundation, okay, we started putting our business plan together, we started buying the land, we started doing our environmental studies. We didn't own no properties at that time when we did our environmental studies. Our board said, well, you got to be nuts. We don't own that. I said, this is going to happen. We're going to do that. We did our environmental studies. We did all of that. 2020 went through. 2021, things started opening up. And that's when our capital campaign started getting into gear. And government stepped up to the plate. Everyone stepped up to the plate because they knew that this project is very important not only to this organization, but to this community. This project represents the arts and cultural with many of our partners in the community, but it's also, we envision this project to be the economic engine of this area, the gateway to America. We'll hear more from CAS and community leaders in a moment. I was able to catch up with the architect of the Institute, who shared with me what this facility will be like you are the architect that is in charge of the building, correct? Could you tell us about the plan? Yeah, the building, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a nice building with what we put together. Um, three stories, just about 40,000 square feet, lots of different amenities. There's a um, commercial kitchen, theater, art gallery, uh, satellite bank, um, a broadcast studio, lots, lots of different stuff in the building. Tell us about how big each it's going to be the, as, as far as the footprint goes. Oh, good question. So it's, probably, it's going to go all the way from Niagara Street all the way to 7th. So it's the whole block. And then it goes north a little bit to the back. There's a little horseshoe section behind that takes us around this next building, getting us back out to 7th. And what's your experience uh, in, in building something like this prior to this? Oh, I've done a lot of work in Buffalo for quite some time, so it's just another building. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very important building, but this, the problems and solutions are still the same. What are some of the other buildings that we could that you looked at to decide how to how you wanted this to be? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, uh, typically, the way I was starting to look at it was like neighborhood kind of community centers, straight, things that have um, good traction with getting people engaged. Uh, but this is such a very unique building. There's so many different things in it. There's not really one particular thing that uh, answers all the questions. So I think there's a lot of different things that tie into it, but. I think mean, this is going to be a nice building when it's done. And so, and really the main goal was is to make it a place for the community. So whatever the community needs, that's what we try to design for. Is there anything about the design that's kind of, kind of specific to the Hispanic American culture? Um, I think there's a lot of color tones. Um, there's like a very like um, kind of colonial feel to the interiors on it. And um, there's, there's some graphics that you can see in the back there in the renderings. Um, it's just, it's going to have like a, a, a fair amount of a Mediterranean feel. Um, but it's going to be um, it's going to be a unique thing. It's it's kind of it's it's a take on a Mediterranean building. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you, and we're really excited. Oh, my pleasure. Community leaders talked about hard work and persistence from Kaz and his team. There were many people that said this couldn't happen. There's no, they can't sustain themselves. There isn't support in the community. But there was one thing that helped them overcome all of that. There was a sense of purpose. There was unity of purpose. They said, this is what we want to do. Then after that, there was unity of determination. 
they said, we have made a decision and this is what we're going to do. And then there was unity to overcome all of the obstacles that were in the way. There were many obstacles in the very beginning. And little by little, those obstacles were removed. But I want to thank those that helped remove the obstacles. We have Crystal People Stokes here and Cal Hasty. I will never forget what you did in Albany. Because we would pay close attention, where are the donors? Where is the support coming from? And we want to thank you, and we will not forget. Our Secretary of State, our Assembly members, our Senators that were here, the foundations, the funders, we thank you. We are so grateful to you. This is just the beginning. This groundbreaking is the first step to the grand opening that we're going to have here. I'm looking forward to bringing my children and grandchildren to this place. I'm looking forward to the work and the vibrancy that will come out of this building. So once again, thank you to the community at large. There's so many people to be thankful for. I just want to thank all of you and will always remember you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an amazing day uh, for a lot of reasons. And, uh, you know, in government, you get frustrated a lot around how long things take. Uh, clearly, Kaz was not that frustrated because this is happening quick. Uh, you know, it seems like a tough haul when you're in it. Uh, but to go from 2019, like you said, we're there wasn't much there, the land wasn't ours, the money wasn't there, to where we stand today in a relatively short period of time, especially when you consider the, the pandemic was in there. Uh, it's an amazing testament to the boldness, the effort, the perseverance, the, the thing that makes us us uh, as Latinos. Uh, for those of you that don't speak Spanish, I'll give you the Spanish word of the day, which is one of my favorite Spanish words in history. Uh, I like the word boldness, but in Spanish, I like the way it sounds, which is de nuevo. Everybody say it with me, de nuevo. De nuevo. Uh, you know, there's a boldness to this group that have put this together from top to bottom, uh, and it's an amazing thing. When we come back, we'll hear from Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown and Governor Kathy Hochul.